of my favorite things about biochemistry is that there's such a wide range of techniques and as a PhD student you get to learn a lot of different techniques um, up to the very end so I a couple years ago started um, learning hydrogen deuterium exchange mass spectrometry which I still have a hard time saying which thankfully gets abbreviated HGXMS um, and so I wanted to give you guys an intro to it um, that I just gave as part of my practice presentation. Um, well, it wasn't really a practice presentation, it was an in-house, but I think it went okay. And I hid a message, um, a little like confidence boost message into my talk. Um, so that made me smile. Okay, but anyway, um, so just, it's not going to be as, um, intro -y as like my past post on HGXMS, but there will be um, some animations. But you just need to know that deuterium is a version, it's an isotope of hydrogen that is, um, it has an extra neutron, um, so it's heavier than hydrogen, but it is, it acts like identically. Um, so yeah. Hydrogen deuterium exchange, or HGXMS, interrogates the secondary structure and solvent accessibility of regions of a protein over time, providing information about conformational dynamics and binding interactions. How it works is you have a protein in a water-based buffer, and you label it by diluting it in a deuterium, or so-called heavy water-based buffer. Over time, hydrogens in the protein will exchange for deuterium, and this can be detected as an increase in mass in the corresponding peptides as measured by mass spectrometry following quench and proteolytic digestion steps. This provides information about the location and extent of the uptake. And by quenching the reaction at different time points, by lowering the pH and temperature to stop the exchange, you get information about how quickly the exchange is occurring. Why all this information matters is because it's providing valuable insight into the protein backbone. This is because the observable exchange is only going to come from the backbone amide hydrogens. Hydrogens attached to carbons do not exchange on these timescales, and those in the side chains, such as in hydroxyl and amine groups, ex can exchange during the reaction, but they exchange back to hydrogen rapidly during the quench step, which is done in a water-based um, buffer at a low pH. This leaves the deuterium signal only coming from the backbone amides. And the hydrogens in these amides will only have been able to exchange if they were accessible to the solvent and at least temporarily free from bonding interactions. Regions with, in regions with strong secondary structure, these backbone amide hydrogens will be um, tied up in hydrogen bonding and, and therefore protected from exchange. In order to exchange for deuterium, they'll have to at least temporarily break those bonds and therefore they'll show very little um, uptake at the time points measured and the uptake will tend to be slower. This is contrast to regions that are solvent exposed and highly flexible with um, these regions will uptake deuterium rapidly and to a large extent, unless, of course, there's a binding partner bound. This will provide protection from exchange, and therefore you get information about binding interactions as well. The real power of HDXMS comes from when you compare a protein in different states, such as with and without a ligand or drug bound. So the data that you get from HGXMS is actually thousands of mass spectral plots. So for each peptide and each replicate, you get a mass spectrum um, indicating the mass of recharge of the peptide. Um, so I can't show you my actual data, so I've anonymized this data so you don't know what it is. Um, but you can see that over time that mass spectral envelope is shifting to the right, so it's increasing in mass. So with each hydrogen that exchanges for deuterium, you get an increase in one. We can plot this on a peptide uptake plot like this. Um, so we have time, and then here we have absolute deuterium uptake. However, different peptides can have different lengths, and therefore it's useful to be able to, um, in order to compare between different peptides of different sizes, 
we can convert this to a fractional deuterium uptake. Um, so that corresponds to the, um, the fraction of the theoretical maximum for that peptide. Um, and so and we could do this for each of the different peptides. Peptides that are well protected are going to show little to any exchange, and those that are not protected are going to show um, high levels of exchange. Um, and then you can represent this as this uptake on, with a heat map. Um, so from like, you'll see these in different scales, but here it's like a rainbow where 0% is um, no exchange, most protected, 100% would be dark red, at least pertain, um, protected most exchange. Um, and so if you have you no know, structure of the protein, um, then you can map this information onto that structure. So you end up uh, getting something like this. So since I can't show you my data, I'm just using this brochure for water uh, dynamics, which is actually what I use. Um, but yeah, so you can do it either like by peptide or heat map. And so here they have it displayed on the structure. Um, and so I see that these like solvent exposed flexible areas show a higher uptake um, than the highly structured area. Um, and you can also compare between states, do like a relative uptake. Um, so this is comparing between default and denatured and finding reasons of differences. Um, so for example, here's another one of theirs. Um, so you can see like, uh, this is like APO, so without the substrate and then the holo, so, or um, with the substrate, and so in this case it's like calcium binding to calmodulin, I think, yeah. So you can see at like the binding sites, you're going to see this uh, much protection in the where the it's bound. So here it's like 36% versus 6%. Um, so you can see information about like binding surfaces as well as conformational changes, so things are happening even in places um, where the substrate, where the calcium isn't bound. So this is telling you that it's inducing like conformational changes of the protein. Um, and so yeah, so you get those for like each level, um, each peptide, and that's just like, so things are gonna look something like this. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch of different ways you can display the data. Um, but yeah, so hope that gives you an idea of some of the things, um, basic overview of HGXMS, um, and yeah.